Gashab Room 1 stands tall over the base camp, while Urdu Kangri makes its formidable presence felt on the other side of the valley. Meer and Shivali uh, Shimshali. Yes. Thank you. So we're going to have some coffee and then we're going to be going uh, in the footsteps of Nim. Nim's, what's his name? We were pretty much in the heart of the ice fall as the early morning light started illuminating the Karakuram giants around us. Kashabram 4 seemed to have turned to gold in the otherwise icy blue and ash black vista. It snowed most of the first night at Camp 1, and early next morning there was a windstorm that blew snow across the campsite, making us think thrice before stepping out of the tent. One can't even indulge in the luxury of listening to music to distract one's mind from the beating that your body is taking while negotiating your way through this deadly icefall. Because situational awareness is of crucial importance for keeping you alive and getting you down safely. There were portions in the ice fall where you could not tell if the ice structure around the crevasse would hold. One had to be super careful, but there is a limit to what one can do in such a situation. Venturing alone in this twisted labyrinth of perilously leaning glacial towers and long and pointy hanging icicles is akin to being on a suicide mission and god forbid if your climbing partner Sherpa or high altitude porter is badly fatigued from lugging loads up and down the mountain then it makes no difference if you have their support or are all alone and on your own in the ice fall of the Gashabrams. Beyond the most life-threatening portion of the ice fall, when you have depleted all your reserves and your body simply cannot take the suffering anymore, your whole existence becomes one in seeking forgiveness for your sins from your true creator. It is thoughts like these that let you reflect Meditate and unwind. It was a major relief getting out of the steep portion of the ice fall. And finally, we could see the band of debris that houses the base camp. But there was still some distance to cover. The glacial streams and ponds are too tempting. If only I had a towel and a pair of slippers. Welcome to base camp. Uh, I haven't even seen my face yet. So 
So the condition of the glacier is really really bad as you can see from the crevasses. So I'm not going to be attempting gaship rums anymore. Uh, let's see how I can salvage this expedition now. Is it going to be? 21st July 3:26 p.m. and this is uh, Desi Mountaineer and uh, Shafali Shimshali the HFP making this video to let you all know that I'm leaving Gashapuram Base Camp and I'm going down to Concordia and then up again to Kedu Base Camp. Reason being um, that while on my first rotation to the upper camps of Gashapuram, I was going from camp one to camp two and I had to fidget with my uh, belaying device. It took a bit too long and the exposure caused a mild frostbite on my, or two fingers on my right hand. So I don't want to risk that again. I don't know if uh, I can take another risk on Gashapuram. Also, the conditions on the glacier are horrendous right now. So I'm gonna go to K2 base camp and I'm gonna see if I can go up to camp one. So this is gonna be fun. So see you at uh, Concordia. The daunting Mustaq Tower was clearly visible from the Gashbrum bend of the Upper Bal Toro. We started at 3.30 p.m. which was pretty late and the sun had almost set when K2 came into view. Yeah, hi, this is Lacey Mountainer. So we left uh, Gashpur base camp earlier today around 3.30 p.m. We spent five hours. 8:30, and we're still outside. I wish you, I wish I could show you the stars. Moving across crevasses. I don't know if you can see anything. So we're pretty close to Concordia. Maybe another 20 minutes. That light above is uh, my trusted HP, and we are at another crevasse. So. 12 past 9 and I think we've reached the camp at Concordia. I was dead tired from tiptoeing all day on the upper Baltoro, but as soon as my tent was set up, I took out my camera and was able to take some amazing long exposure shots. Second July, 7.45 a.m. Beautiful weather. So we arrived uh, last night around 9ish in Concordia and now we are leaving for uh, K2 base camp. 
I've been to Broad Peak Base Camp, but I've never been to Kato Base Camp, so this is gonna be something new for me. And dang, don't I just love this peak, Pitra Peak. See you in uh, Kato Base Camp. There was a patch of white glacial ice to trek over at the north corner of Concordia while heading out towards K2. The weather was brilliant and we got exceptionally clear views of the Marble Peak, Kashibram 4, Broad Peak and K2. At almost 4,700 meters above sea level, Concordia is the best place to view K2. It is the junction point of Baltoro, Goodwin Austin and Upper Baltoro Glacier. The three mammoth glaciers meet here to form a massive confluence that looks like a highway of ice and debris. For the first time in my life, I was able to see K2 the way it is depicted on the 50 rupee note. The terrain is quite dramatic right after Concordia. One has to hop across glacial streams and has to climb down into and then up out of deep dips and bends in the glacier to arrive onto the other side, onto the band of debris of the Goodwin-Austin Glacier. Nine twenty-five, by far the most clearest view of Kitu in terms of uh, base to top that I've had. Awesome, awesome news. What a beautiful moment. The last time I ventured this way was back in 2004, when it took us a whole day to go and return from Broad Peak Base Camp. It's uh, almost half past noon, and uh, I finally arrived at the Broad Peak Base Camp. So it's like an over. So it seems as if uh, stuff is still going back. The expeditions have rolled up, but there are still things that need to go back. You can also see the camp toilet. This is more like the glacier I remember. We took a short break at Broad Peak Base Camp and soon after we climbed over a large mound of rock and debris to descend onto the other side so that we were now trekking parallel to the fast melting icefall of the Goodwin Austin Glacier. Mm -hmm. 
as we came closer to K2 base camp, another ice fall awaited us, but this time we were able to bypass it. p.m. We've been walking since morning. Went past Broad Peak Base Camp. And now the first signs of uh, K2 Base Camp. And boy am I relieved. Like in the movies, I was anticipating wide open and deep crevasses with ladders hung across for crossing over them, but in contrast, the home stretch to the base camp of the Savage Mountain was far less daunting. At 5,150 meters above sea level, the base camp is stretched over a wide band of rocks and debris, much wider than the band of debris at Kashabrum base camp. From this close, K2 was very overwhelming, but somehow less intimidating and seemed rather doable. For me, the base camp was very different from what I had imagined it to be like and looked nothing like how it has been depicted in the Hollywood films over the years. corn piled up by the Nepalese climbers and Sherpas was at the center of all activity at the base camp. 25th July, 10 a.m. There's this beautiful mushroom cloud over K2 summit. That's probably the Closest I'll come to climbing K2. So we're headed north, I believe. So up to now it's uh, been quite easy. Most of the snow has melted, the glacier is receding. So let's see how it goes. So half an hour into the trek, we've arrived at this snow field. That's the way I came from. The corner ridge is the K2 Memorial. This is where I'm headed. The snow is soft. It's, uh, the sun is reflecting really sharply 
I'm gonna probably change my goggles pretty soon. Uh, this is fun! I did not imagine that it would be like this at the base of K2. This is so damn beautiful. Awesome. Just wonderful. Fantastic. So the terrain keeps changing. We are now from the snow field into the ice fall. And uh, yeah. I'm really enjoying myself. I don't know why, but I am. This is fun. See you guys in the next episode while I and Shifa explore the ice fall of K2. Thank you.